So Google has announced that their cloud-based streaming service called Stadia will be shut down by January 2023. And while it does suck to lose a project like this in the gaming community, at the end of the day, it was just never gonna work. Now, that may sound harsh, but over the years we were given clues that this was always going to be the case. The Stadia was just never going to last long in the current gaming market. So let's start with this foundation. Stadia tried to revolutionize cloud-based gaming as a whole. For those unaware or who need a reminder, cloud-based gaming is a service in which a game is streamed from private servers to your device. No downloads or installs or anything like that. It's like a Netflix but for gaming. But no matter how much companies try to push it, we as a gaming community are not ready for something like this to be the norm. One day in the future, yeah, we'll be there, we'll get there. But as of now, no. Cloud-based gaming requires a lot of bandwidth and a high download speed, especially when trying to play something up to 4K. Obviously, results may vary depending on your internet provider or location, but with most users saying download speeds of 30 to 50 megabytes per second are needed for a steady connection for 4K gaming, it was unlikely that most people could utilize the service properly. With me living in the States, for example, the average household in my country's internet speed is around 42 megabytes per second. So you'd think most people could handle it, but no. Factoring in bandwidth, how many devices your internet is hooked up to plays into it. Cell phones, computers, other smart devices. And when they're in use, it's even worse. To utilize the full 4K experience of a Stadia would require you to use your internet for pretty much just that. You could easily play these games at 720p to 1080p with those speeds. But this isn't even mentioning factors like data caps, connection strength, or whether your device is wired to your router or not. There's too many variables that could lower your download speed that each user is guaranteed to have a different experience with it. And yes, you can joke and say, well, why not get a better connection? While that's true, why would someone upgrade their entire service provider just to play a game that they could easily play on other consoles? Hassle-free. Google didn't consider the majority of gamers when making Stadia. Now, is it all bad? No. I'll give credit where credit's due and admit that Google did revolutionize and truly try to optimize the cloud gaming space for the average household. It's definitely the best service by far when it comes to that technology. But it still wasn't perfect. Now let's get into the Stadia itself and its really bad launch. For starters, features that were promised at launch, such as Buddy Pass, 4K streaming to Chrome PCs, and streaming features like Crowdplay, all came after months of patches. The Stadia's flagship game on release was Destiny 2. Sure, you got it for free with the Founders Edition, but to get into another gaming space for a non-exclusive game? <laughs> As for its release lineup, it was just okay, with games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Mortal Kombat 11, and Red Dead Redemption 2 just to name a few. But most of them were already on sale or had price drops on other platforms up to this point. On Stadia they launched full price. For the average to the hardcore gamer, there was zero reason to get into the Stadia if you already owned a current gen console. Not to mention that because this was a cloud based service, every game you own was never actually yours. This is being shown now with a Twitter user who might lose almost 6,000 hours of progress on Red Dead Redemption 2 when the service officially closes. That's 246 days of progress about to be lost, all because it's a cloud-based game. Personally, reasons like this are why I didn't get into the Stadia. I'm really big on owning my games with physical versions. With digital, I can kind of understand how you own your games. If a service has to shut down, you usually have the chance to download your games prior and you're all good. But with cloud base, not the case. You never fully own your game and can lose it at any time. And when you add in the fact that these games are full price just like their console counterpart, it really puts the service into question. I know some people may be comfortable with the idea of their gaming library being all cloud based or at least wouldn't mind it but the majority of the gaming community isn't ready for that kind of investment. Okay, so I explained the problems with the internet infrastructure and the Stadia at launch, but if all that wasn't bad enough, it's how Google handled the Stadia's post-launch that further buried it. Spending millions of dollars to secure some of these launch titles, 
the Stadia suffered further financially after underperforming the number of units sold, underselling hundreds of thousands of expected users. Trying to remain strong, they created independent studios around launch to create first-party titles and games. They scaled it back almost immediately, and after three years, Stadia Vice President Phil Harrison emailed all their studios praising them for their hard work, all to lay them off later that same week, which destroyed any chance of the Stadia ever having a breakout title, hurting the public image even more, and further showed how disorganized the service was. This probably hurt the console the most post-launch. The console had no standout titles that made the Stadia worth getting. Every AAA game, every small time indie, they were all available on other hardware. Usually discounted, usually at least out months in advance, and this is all while paying for a monthly subscription to even access the service. But to complicate it even further, the service was not perfect. Due to the nature of cloud-based gaming as mentioned earlier, Input lag was a real issue on top of just general video quality and performance issues. Again, user experience varies, but these were problems that plagued a lot of people, especially at launch where a service performance is put to the test the most, which helped to deter future gamers from ever getting into this. And look, I wanted the Stadia to work, I did. But Google rushed into a market that they weren't ready for with a service that hasn't been fully tested and optimized. It was a strong idea, but the gaming community isn't ready for this. After announcing their shutdown, it was revealed that Google pretty much blindsided most of their employees with this announcement, showing even more how disorganized they were and how low of a priority the Stadia was for them. And in all this commotion, it's even rumored that Google canceled a supposed sequel for Death Stranding. Despite all that, over these short years, the core technology of cloud gaming did have some merit. For example, the Stadia helped Destiny developers to continue working on future projects while being able to work from home during the pandemic. Even though Google and Stadia didn't leave the impact they originally wanted to, it paved the way for other companies to expand on it and try to integrate it into their hardware. Stadia was a service that fell underneath its own broken promises and ambitions. It was designed to appeal to a specific group of gamer, but with no games to entice people to get into it. But to any company that decides to venture into this, whether it's Sony, Microsoft, or whoever, make sure you understand your market, understand what the average consumer is willing to invest their money into, show full support of your teams, and don't break your promises. I could get into more of the drama aspect of it, the more behind the scenes, but I wanted to get more into the technical aspect as to, again, why the stadia was always destined to fail. Thanks for tuning in, enjoy the rest of your day, and take care.